Well, friends, we've reached that mark. It is the one-year review of the HM-130 Max by Woodland Mills. I really have nothing bad to say about this mill. Uh, I did have one thing, just a, one issue, and I just got off the phone with customer service, and they are sending me a brand new lube tank for this mill. All I had to do was send them a few pictures of the issue I had, and this is honestly the only problem that I've had to call them about in one year of ownership. And I'll take you over here and show you. Uh, the lube tank is made of aluminum, I believe. And uh, the problem I'm having, I'll have to take you off the stand, I'm sorry. So I was out here opening up my guards. I was getting ready to clean the mill up for this video and a drop of water hit me on the arm. I look up and I see, you see it, the water forming right there on my lube tank on both sides. So I climbed up top to inspect it and sure enough, I've got two hairline cracks. I'll take you up here and show you. I don't know if you can see them or not. Right there at the top, there's a hairline crack here and one on the other side. If I can get it in a good light, you may not be able to see it, but. All I had to do was make one call, send pictures of the problem, and it took them about five minutes to respond. And they said, uh, send us your address for confirmation. We'll send you a brand new lube tank. So I just got done confirming that order. Free tank, free shipping. I think altogether it was about $157. It's all free. I don't have to pay a dime. And uh, that, that's stand up right there. What a great company. Just one phone call. And you can see my lube tank is not bent or beat up. If I would have hit it, if it would have been my fault, I would have admitted to it and paid for the tank. But you can see there is no damage to that tank at all. There's no damage to my meal other than one scuff mark right here. Where I got careless and a log just grazed it. Other than that, this meal is in pristine working order after one year. So hats off to Woodland Mills customer service. That was great. I was thinking it was going to be a more drawn out process. Really the whole process start to finish. Me calling them, the emails, the pictures, was over with in less than 10 minutes. I was done. So what a great company. Wow. I heard they had good customer service, but I wouldn't expect it to be that fast. I mean, I'm here in the eastern United States. They're in Canada. It'll be here in about two weeks. But anyway, uh, this is the one-year review of the Woodland Mills HM-130 Max, like I explained. Try to get my camera set up good here. What I want to talk to you about is my experiences after one year. Now there is about, let me check the hour meter. There is 54.8 hours on this mill. Okay, right off the bat. The line of sawmills that comes from your woodland mills are all manual. These mills are perfect for the hobbyist or someone with small projects. You can even sell lumber with them. You just can't produce it as quickly as you could with a full man a hydraulic mill. So if you're looking for a mill to start a wood business with, I would probably look for a fully hydraulic mill. This mill is targeted for those hobbyists like I would mentioned and people like me who just want to cut their own lumber and maybe sell some on the side. It's possible to you know sell lumber with this mill. It's just gonna take you longer to do it. But if that's the market you're in, you need to look at fully hydraulic mills. However, this mill is excellent for what it's designed for. Uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna talk about the things that other than the lube tank I already explained. We're gonna open the guards up. I've already got them unclipped. I'm going to bring you in here. Right off the bat, the only thing I've replaced for is uh, the belt right here. This follower wheel belt right here. I replaced that. 
And it was not Woodland Mills' fault. It was not a defect. A wood chip got in here and somehow came back and got in between the blade and the uh, belt through the blade. And it, uh, it made a place on the belt that was like a hump, an indention in there. And that belt, that blade did not want to stay riding on that thing with that hump. So that was not their fault. That was mine. I accepted responsibility. I went to the local Napa. They had a belt to replace it with right off the bat. No trouble. You can go to the local hardware, I mean local auto parts, and find these belts. And this belt is made to be loose. You can see right there it says a follower belt rides loose. That is normal. This one is a little bit tighter than the other one, but it still rides loose. And when you get the mill, don't think this is some kind of defect. It, it does stay loose. I think the mindset behind that was it helped sawdust fall out instead of gathering behind it i don't know that's just the way they are it don't seem to be a problem crown belt the other belt is still the one from the factory i think i got 54.8 hours on the mill and it is time to replace that belt i inspected it a while ago and i do see a few cracks on the underside let's see i saw one earlier there's one in there somewhere. There's a little crack in between those little fingers. So I'm going to go to the local Napa and get a replacement for that. But that's the good thing about these meals. You can get anything you need as far as the belts and probably bolts and all that at the local hardware. Uh, the meal cuts great. It cuts really great. Uh, the key is to keep your blade sharp. Keep your adjustments up. Blade torque. It says right here, 20 to 25 foot-pounds or two and a half to three full turns from snug. This is the method I use, the snug method turning. I've never put a torque wrench on this mill. Some people I've read about in the forums have went from torque wrench back to this method because they were over-torquing the mill. But the blade's on there now, so what I'll do is I'll turn it till I feel it get snug. Right there is snug. Now start from one ear or the other. I'll go two and a half full turns. Let me turn the camera a little bit. There's one. There's two and straight down. There's three. And notice how that inner race part there is flush with the outer housing. That's where you want to be. That's the method I use. It has not failed me. I've only thrown a blade two times with this meal. One was when the chip went in the belt and wedged the blade off and ruined the follower belt. The other time I hit part of a chain in a, in a cedar log I was cutting for a friend and it threw the blade. But other than that, I've had no trouble. Now since having the meal, I've checked the track in one time. I did have to make one small adjustment. It was painless. You got your adjustments right here. Your manual will show you how to do that. Rather than one time I've had to adjust the saw head height. I got to cutting and my uh, cant, which is when you square the log up into a square form, was one eighth inch higher on one side than the other. So what I did right here is your adjustment. That's your adjustment for the left and the right saw head height, fine tuning right there. I was able to take this bolt loose and adjust this cable and get that one eighth back out and get it true. When changing the oil on your woodland mills, you'll notice that the oil plug is up under there. You got the cylinder head coming out at an angle. It's kind of a tight place to get into with a funnel. What I suggest and what I have on hand is one of these. It screws onto your oil bottle and it has a valve right here. You push in or pull out and you can take that thing and angle it right in there and get your oil in without making a mess. I'm not sure where I purchased this at. I don't know if it was at the Napa or the Walmart or no sponsors there, but I'm not sure where I got it, but that is a must have. It really makes changing oil easy and painless with no mess. As far as the engine, I've had no trouble. It's run smooth. It cranks every time. It is a 14 horse Kohler. It's been a solid engine so far. It's got the electric start, which comes standard on the HM130 Max. I have yet to use the pull rope. I do pull it from time to time to make sure it don't seize up. Got some dust in there. 
I gotta give the mill a good cleaning. I did blow it off with a leaf blower for this video, but I'm probably gonna mill a little bit this afternoon, so I don't wanna get it too tidy. I'm gonna dust it up again. But this is a great mill. I can't say that enough. For the hobbyist or somebody doing it yourself, if you follow my channel, you've seen the shed that I built. It is a 32 by 16. And when I ordered my mill, I went ahead and ordered the extra extension so I could mill 16 and a half foot lumber and a 10 pack of blades. And I've yet to use all my blades. I've used half my blades. You can see I've got some hung up right there on the post. Those are dull blades. I got the sharp ones in my shop. But uh, the blades do good. The, the thing you got to remember is if you keep the adjustments right, and you keep your blade sharp. This mill cut's excellent. I'll take you back around here. The adjustment, which is made with this handle right here, what I've found out is um, I don't even look at my log scale anymore. I found out that five turns of this handle will give me an inch and a half thick board every time. So when I'm cutting, cutting inch and a half thick material i don't even look at the, the scale when i come off the top of that cant i just crank down five times and i go again i believe four turns gives me an inch and an eighth or a quarter somewhere around there and three and a half turns gives me a perfect inch so i kind of got it figured out how many times i had to turn it so honestly i don't even look at the scale i do use it from time to time when i'm cutting uh different sizes but when i got one size of lumber in mind i just turn the crank count the turns and just go with it and that makes milling a little bit faster that's about what the ratio winds up it seems like about a quarter of an inch per full turn of that handle is what you get in drop but <sighs> keep your wheels clean keep the debris out of these wheels you can see i got a little bit build up right there if you get too much build up in there it can actually raise your sawmill up the thickness of ever how much debris you got in that in that little channel there and uh that's the operator error that's not woodland mill's fault this mill comes standard with these little wires that ride in those grooves to keep them clean they're just out of adjustment i need to come in here and loosen that bolt and readjust those where it'll lay down in there tight like it's supposed to and that will keep those wheels clean Another accessory I like to keep hung up down here at the mill is a simple paintbrush. I get these from the Dollar Tree, not sponsored. And they're excellent paintbrushes. I use them on all my woodworking projects. But uh, what would you do with a paintbrush? Well, every time I put gas in my mill, I come up here with that paintbrush and I get all the dust away from the cap, off the cap and around it. That way, every time I open my cap, I'm not introducing fine dust into my tank it only took a few seconds to do that you can do this as well with your lube tank you can go up there and brush around that filler neck off the cap before you pour your water in because over time if you get a little bit of dust in there every time you fill it up after a while you're getting a lot of dust in there so it's just a little trick and tip to keep that from happening as well as when you check the oil or add oil you shouldn't have to add any but when you do the oil changes or checking your oil just take this brush and sweep out around the cap real quick and simple I also use this brush down here at my blade guides I'll come down here you see this one's got some debris on it right now I purposely didn't clean that off for this video so you could see it but I'll take that brush and I can sweep that out now sometimes I'll get a tiny little screwdriver too and I'll just kind of rake that out there's a little bearing back here on the back that that blade goes up against you want to keep all that clean, I'll take my finger back here and manually spin that bearing to make sure it's still free. And that one's spinning. I like to feel and check for any grooves or wear in the side of the bearing. You can purchase replacements from their website. You could probably find those bearings online or at your hardware store. Who knows? I mean, that's the simplicity of this meal. A lot of the bearings can be found in other places other than Woodland Mills, not to knock them out of a sale. But uh, keeping those clean and checking the tolerance in there is going to keep your meal cutting 
at optimal levels because that you know, those blocks sandwich the blade and keep it from twisting up and down on you if you get too much tolerance in there you might get some wavy lumber but uh, I did have one time where these came loose and dropped down so I can't remember what the uh, spec is on that uh, tolerance in there but it's in your manual the manual with these meals I can't say enough about that when I looked at the manual that come with this meal it was very well drawn out the pictures I could just about put this meal together when I got it just by looking at the pictures they were that well drawn out in my opinion and uh, it was I uh, we've all had products we've had to assemble with terribly written manuals I mean you're just like who the heck got paid to do this not this company they got excellent manuals so your manual will go over all this stuff in full detail your adjustments and all that all right let's inspect the track this mill did spend about three or four months out in the open weather if you follow my channel when i first got the mill i set it up on about a 20 foot long metal roofing pallet i got from my friend at k and r metals and other than that, it's been under this shed the rest of its life. You can see there is no rust on this frame anywhere. Nowhere. A little discoloration where it was out in the weather, but there's no rust. None of the bolts are rusted. None of them. There's no rust anywhere on this mill after being out in the weather for three to four months. I do like the stainless steel bunk covers that come standard on the 130. That helps turning your logs, helps you when turning them. Another tip I like to do for you, I like to keep my felling wedges out here at the mill. And what I do with that, when I put a log up here and roll it up against the log stops, if you got a log that's not perfectly flat, it'll tend to want to roll back on you. So when I get it pushed up tight, I'll slide that wedge under it to hold it in place. And then I can use both hands to engage my log dogs, the clamps. So keeping a felling wedge on hand is really nice. Another tip, I saw another channel that was doing this, is I got some 2-inch PVC pipe. And what I'll do is I'll slide that right over my log, log stops. So when I'm turning the log, they don't want to ride up over the stop. That keeps you from having to raise and lower your log stops a bunch. Now, where would that be handy? Well, I had one day where all I was milling was 6 by 6s true 6 by 6 beams. That's all I was cutting all day long. So what I did was I set my log stops up at 5 and 3 quarters. I'd get my log in there. I'd flatten the top. And when I got ready to spin it, of course, these would be lower. I'd pull it back, I'd throw these on, spin it, take them back off, and reclamp the log and keep going. But keep in mind, when I'm cutting something like 6 by 6s or whatever, I'll go to my log pile and I'll only select logs big enough to make said lumber. Um, that makes it a whole lot, there's less cuts involved that way. Four cuts and you got a beam, you're, you're golden. Saves you a few steps having that PVC pipe. And it's stout enough it don't break. You'd think it would break, but, you know, I'm leaning into that pretty hard and it ain't breaking. That is a cool trick right there. The PVC pipe, 2 inch, fits right over it and helps you get that log turn without a lot of moving of your log stop. Let's talk about blade lubrication. Now, when I first got the meal, I was reading on the internet that a lot of people use dish soap in with their water. It keeps the pitch off the blades. I cut mainly pine, southern yellow pine. I was having trouble with my blades getting gummed up. A friend told me about pine saw. That's what I use now, and it works. It is the trick. I put uh, one bottle. This is a little 9.5-ounce bottle I got at the Dollar Tree, not a sponsor. And I bought about four or five of these. So what I'll do now is I buy the big bottle at the dollar store. And then I'll just refill these little ones because that is that seems like to be the perfect amount. Nine and a half ounces per lube tank of water. This keeps my blades clean as a whistle. Now I was talking about uh, making adjustments on your bandsaw. 
if you follow my channel you know when I built this shed I came out here and I dug footers I laid block I cut beams and then I set my mill on top of that because I didn't want it to ever move At this point on the one year review it hasn't moved a bit I'm not saying it never will but so far it hasn't moved these mills come standard with these adjustment feet so you can fine-tune the up and downs but my suggestion to you if you're having trouble with your uh, your uh, camp being a little bit out of out of level like I told you earlier mine was an eighth inch high on one side always start from the bottom of the mill and work your way up and what I mean by that is you start at the base check your track first remember the blade and the mill is going to follow whatever the track is doing if you got a dip in the track it's going to show the blade is going to do the same thing in the in the in the uh, log so if you're having issues start at the base and work your way up check the track pull a line i'll pull a roll of twine and i'll pull it down through there to see if it's level if that checks out see if your wheel has debris in it if they're clean then start to work your way up look at the fine tune adjustments that i showed you earlier on the left and the right of the saw head if you start from the base and work to the top you'll find your problem and it'll get you back on track another thing to keep a check on is these little uh, plastic guides in here you can kind of loosen these bolts and tighten those up around your uh, around your post and keeping those kind of snug will keep your mill from moving side to side. It'll get the slop out of it. If you got now from the factory, the mill comes with a little yellow guard that kind of covers this portion of the blade that's not in use. Now I'll close this so you can see. It would cover that portion right there. Um, I took mine off. A lot of people do. My suggestion is probably just leave it where it's at. Uh, also that hole right there there used to be a metal finger that come out of there and it would hang down over the front of the blade at about this angle and what that would do is that would keep you from running into your log stops that little finger would hit the log stop before the blade mine kept coming loose i could have put some red loctite on it and it would have probably stayed in there but whether it fell out about the second time i just left it out uh, that's not woodland mill's fault Red Loctite would have fixed that issue. I've gotten so used to not having it now. Really, with that finger in place, you can cut about 28 and a half inches wide. If you wanted to get the full 30 out of your mill, you would have to lower that finger down out of your way. That's the only offset. If you're going for 30 inch material, you would have to lower that finger. I just left mine out. So if you do that, be very mindful of where your log stops is because you'll run into them. I already have, I joined the club i almost went a whole year without hitting my log stops and i didn't brag about it because i knew one time <laughs> sooner or later it would happen this little valve right here is your flow rate control you unscrew that out it lets more flow come or you can tighten it up to reduce flow now i don't really like this valve this little piece here will swivel you have a quick connect for the tube that runs down to the brass valve that is hooked to your throttle linkage. I do like this. When you engage the mill, the throttle will also pull this valve in. You see the flow started? When you let go, the flow stops. That is a good idea. I like that. It works great. Had no trouble out of this. I did have one time where this flow valve stopped up. What I've started doing when I'm done milling for the day, I try not to put more lube in my tank than I'm actually gonna use. When I'm done for the day, I undo this quick connect and I let all the water drain out. Great idea for wintertime usage. Never leave your lube tank full of water. I don't care if you put uh, windshield washer fluid in it. I still drain my lube tank so I don't risk anything freezing and busting in the winter months. I'll let the flow out. I'll take this tube. I will hold the valve open and I'll let all the water drain out of this tube and all the way down here so there's no chance it freezes up. But what I am going to do is replace this with a simple short quarter turn valve i'll buy one of these little shark bite quick connects and put in the bottom and just do away with this it's not a bad bad design but when i had to unscrew it to unstop it it had tiny orifices in there and they're just prone to stop up and the problem i had was when i left my lube tank full and there was about a month where i didn't have time to meal 
And as some of that lube evaporated, it left a residue in there. And that residue was stopping that valve up. It wasn't Woodley Mills' fault. It was me leaving the tank full. So that's one reason I like to empty my tank at the end of the day. Another tip, keep dust and debris out of your clamps. I like to lube mine up periodically after I've gotten all the dust out of them. It helps them work better. These will get froze up on you if you don't keep them clean and lubed up. They work great otherwise. Another thing I forgot to mention, uh, something you should do often, is once you got your blade fully torqued, I would pull it over each of your saw bunks and measure up to the bottom of the blade. This is another way to tell if your mill is out of, out of true or not. Push it over each of your bunks and measure up. You could even just cut a little block, maybe something four inches, ever how wide you want it, a block, and use that at each bunk. A lot easier than pulling a tape measure. You could just put it over the bunk, see if your block has the same tolerance under each one. Another thing I'd done to my mill was I took a little piece of flexible tubing and I stuck it onto that nipple where the water comes out. I was having a little trouble with that stream of water wanting to hit the back of the blade instead of the center the center and I would get a little pitch build up right out here so with that little piece of tubing that concentrates that water right to the center of the blade where it needs to be and that works for me just fine I also keep a square out here on hand every so often I'll take this out and check my cant once I cut it just to ensure that I'm cutting true it only takes a few seconds to throw this on the cant to see how you're cutting also, before milling into a log, especially a pine, they're very sappy. It's just like glue. When they're cut down, they're going to hit the ground. They're going to get drugged through the dirt, the sand. That right there is sand stuck in the sap. What do you think is going to happen when the blade hits that? It's going to dull it. So I like to cut my logs a little bit long, and then I'll clean the ends up. I'll cut about an inch off of that, so I'm going into good, clean wood. Here's an example of how the two inch PVC pipe makes turning your logs a whole lot easier. Now I'm cutting four by fours here for a customer. I've got my log dog set up just below that measurement. It's high enough that it'll clamp and hold the log properly, but it's still low enough that if I try to turn the log with where they are height wise, it will ride up over the log stops. Unclamp the log, move it back, stick the PVC on. Now I'm gonna rotate it Remove the pipe, reclamp it, and keep going. That was a whole lot faster than me raising the log stops, turning the log, lowering them back down, and reclamping. That just took a few seconds, and I'm off to the races again. I think I covered all the things that you need to look at on this mill. If I left any out, I'll mention it towards the end, but uh, my experience with this mill has been excellent. I have milled all the lumber to build this shed. I've milled a lot of other lumber, and so far it is cut nice and true. We'll pan over here to a 2x4. I've got laying here that I cut. I'll show you. I've got a little junk laying around. Never mind that. And that blade's not even razor sharp. That blade's probably half dull. And it's still cutting awesome. But, um... The mill is good for the hobbyist I mentioned earlier. Uh, excellent buy. I think this mill delivered to my place of choosing with one extra extension and a 10 pack of blades was $6,152. That is an excellent bang for your buck. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was looking at Woodmiser when I was in the market for a mill a year ago. Everything was, such, was on such a ridiculous back order. 
Uh, at the time, wood miser was over a year. I was looking at the LT15. Uh, they even got a entry level mills that you can get from wood miser, but even that was about a year out. And when I called Woodland Mills, it was a, uh, I think it was six to 12 weeks when I placed the order. The mill got here in four weeks. So that was awesome. But you know, for a mill that cost under $7,000, you can cut up to 30 inches wide. You got 14 horsepower. And with the extension I bought, you can cut 16 and a half foot lumber. And the beauty of it is you can buy as many extensions as you want. You can cut a friggin' 50 foot beam if you want to. If you got room to put that much track, you can cut it. With that, I'm going to close out the review and I'm going to talk about a few things I'm going to do here at the mill improvements. Now, I know you're all waiting for the cabin build. I do live a busy lifestyle uh, with my kids and wife and my mom. I had to look after and work. But um, one problem I'm having is, uh, let me show you. If you look right up there, that is my shop. Now, when I need uh, another blade, I have to go all the way up there and come all the way back. Now, I'm not trying to sound lazy, but when you're trying to really put the lumber out, you're out here, you're in the zone, you're trying to get something done. The last thing you want to do is stop and walk all the way up there, forget half of what you went up there to get and come back and realize you forgot it. So what I'm going to do, friends, is uh, let me walk over here. I'll pan around. I've been pushing off around the mill with my loader. And... Uh, I've cleaned off here at the uh, end and around the back. What I'm going to do here is build me a tool shed on to the end of the mill here. It's going to be about a 12 by 12. I'm just going to stay true with the roof line. Just come on over. This is uh, from pole to pole. We're 12 feet wide. You know, with the extension of the roof, that's what gives me about 16 feet. But going from pole to pole, we're 12 foot. I'm going to come out 12 foot. And this is going to be my little tool shed for the bandsaw mill only. I'm going to keep all my blades in here. I'm going to put my sharpener in here, my pine saw, gas for the mill. Any accessory that has anything to do with this mill is going to be right here in this tool shed. And that's going to keep me from having to walk up there and shoot. I might even put an air conditioner in here. When I get hot, I can go in there and chill out. Put a little mini fridge in there. I can chill out for a little bit and have a cold drink and get back to milling. Maybe even edit videos in there. Who knows? But on the back of the shed, I cleaned up as well, pushed off a little more. I'm still going to do a lean-to off the back of this. i got to cut that one tree. I'm going to come off this with a lean-to, probably stay true to the roof line. And I'll use that to put other things, like maybe my wood splitter or some other stuff that's up there crowding my shop. Uh, maybe stack lumber under there, firewood, whatever. Well, friends, I think I'm going to wrap this video up i don't want to bore you to death too much but uh, all i got to say about this meal is it is excellent for the money the bang for the buck is right here i do not regret buying this meal i did go to extremes on building a base and a, a shed for it you know i did go above and beyond i feel uh doing this base but i wanted it to be real solid i didn't want it to move around on me and uh as far as a uh, log capacity and all that it's a great meal it seems to have plenty of power for what it is but uh, you'll learn as you go along uh, the feed rate for your meal you know with a sharp blade really it takes minimal pressure you shouldn't have to push hard at all just lean into it a sharp blade will walk right through that lumber as it gets dull it'll get harder to push but the key to that is learning how fast to push how hard to push your meal I'm advancing let the blade do the work the blade is cutting it's just like a drill bit if you push too hard on a drill bit you overheat it you dull it think of the bandsaw the same way you push too hard that blade's going to want to go somewhere it gets too much pressure and it can't cut fast enough it's going to start dipping and diving to alleviate the pressure you're putting on it so there's a little operator there's a there's a little um, trial and error that it'll take but after a while you'll learn your meal I almost forgot one other accessory I'm going to add to this meal. It'll be a future video. I'm going to come about halfway. And I'm going to mount a Harbor Freight dust collector right there. 
I'll run a flex tube over to the mill and hook it on with one of those floor return vents. I've seen a few people on YouTube do it. And then I'm going to pipe it with a 4-inch pipe out to wherever I want the sawdust to blow at. That's going to take care of probably 90% of the dust that comes off this mill. I just think that would be a good add-on for the mill. And uh, the dust collector is not that expensive. I think you can get one for a couple hundred bucks maybe. I got one in my shop. That's what it has, the Harbor Freight. I, I bolted it to the wall. I plumbed my whole shop in 4-inch PVC. And it goes out the back wall and blows into a pile out there about 20 foot away from the shop. It works great. 4 inches, perfect size duct work for that Harbor Freight blower. That 2 horsepower blower they got. So that's what I'm going to do here, and uh, that should keep a lot of the dust out and keep me from having to scoop up a lot. You'll still get some that will fall down here, but a quick uh, cleaning with a leaf blower will take care of all that. But look for that in the near future. I'm going to do a video on that. But once again, man, the customer service with these meals is awesome. Like I told you earlier, man, I come out here, found the crack in my tank, and it, it took less than 10 minutes of me making a phone call sending a few pictures and boom i got the confirmation email i got a new lube tank coming in the mail in about two weeks that's awesome that's like 150 some dollars i ain't got to spend i've had the mill for a year i can't quite remember what the warranty is for the mill itself but there was no questions asked i showed them a picture of the mill as well just so they didn't think i was lying to them so they could see there was no damage they didn't even question me on it. They just said, we're sending you a new lube tank. What an awesome company. I, wow, I can't say enough. I'm not being paid to talk to you about this meal. They're not paying me to tell you this is a good meal. I wouldn't tell you it was a good meal if I didn't think it was. If there's any bad reviews out there, I think somebody just had a miscommunication because it, it's been nothing but great with me. I mean, like we just said with this lube tank, that was awesome. Anyway, I'm not going to keep rambling. The one-year review of the Woodland Mill 130 Max. This is a great investment, people. I have probably made back half my money already with this mill. Just cutting a little lumber on the side for people. You got to keep in mind, I, I can't come out here every day when I get home and run my sawmill. I got kids. I got responsibilities. I would love to do that. But I just get out here when I got time. And just getting out here, here and there, I've already, you know, made half my money back. So it's a good investment. You could easily make your money back on it. And uh, if you're on the fence about the Woodland Mills, hey, jump on in. Uh, a little bit about the channel. I'm over the 500 mark for subscribers. I think I'm up. The last time I looked, I was at 509. Uh, I think that's pretty good. For doing YouTube not quite a year I haven't been as dedicated to the channel as I was when I first started due to responsibilities but that's not bad in my opinion I know you know what I'm doing is not Hollywood quality but you know I just share what I like to do with people and hope they enjoy watching it but um, I want to thank everyone so far who has subscribed to my channel I appreciate each and every one of you and I would love to one day build a channel that generated enough income that I could help people. You know, take part of the money I make and do a little charity that helps uh, people in my area out. That's one of the goals I have with this channel. And uh, if I get to that level, that would be great. But if I don't, that's fine too. I still enjoy sharing what I do with you all. So if you're part of the team, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I look forward to making future content like i said the cabin build is is ongoing i'm in the process of getting footers you'll see that footage here soon i'm going to film the tool shed build you'll see that and probably the lean to but just a lot of projects i got going on but you know right now i still got six years to go till i retire from my regular job so i'll be able to really do a lot then but right now i just gotta do what time allows me to do but anyway I thank you all for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, you can visit the Sheffield Woodworks page on Facebook where we could talk more personally and privately. If you have any questions in regards to any video I put out, you can find me there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.